Next, let's take advantage of some live tooling. So we can utilize standard cycles or some more advanced cycles, which would be very difficult to do without a CAM software, such as profit milling, as we see in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. So now we're going to go ahead and do some live milling on the outside of this part on the features that we can do. We've got we've got a flat here, we've got a pocket here, we've got a rotary OD pocket there. So we'll go ahead and do some stuff. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is maybe check out and make sure that I have some tools. So I'll do this while I'm doing the video. Uh, on this pocket here, uh, we got again under the solids tab if you missed it under home show hide select the solids and make sure there's a check there and it'll be somewhere on your screen so you will you should have that tab so looking at one of the radius face uh, elements on that on that wall we've got a diameter of, of uh, 400 thousands so you know what do you want to what do you want to do here? Uh, what I might do is just make like let's say let's see if we got like a six millimeter or something like that. Uh, we've got a four millimeter here, which I'm not sure which one that is. This one looks like it's the uh, tool that's a cross tool, so that is going to work, but maybe it's a little bit small. So if you wanted to, you know, we can edit this. Let's go ahead and actually create a tool. So I'll go to station nine. It's open. I'm going to right click and say add an adaptive item. And uh, what happens is it's going to bring up your window with, you know, your different tools, uh, you know, that you can choose from. So, uh, you know, here I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a milling folder here for Pioneer. I'm going to go back to the holders and I'm going to go, I've got WTO, WTO holding holders on this uh, machine already. So what I'm going to do, I believe this one was a Nakamura 55. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to this folder here and uh, you can see right now that everything is just listed in a uh, list view and you can come here and select maybe let's say large icons or even extra large icons and you can uh, this preview window can be turned on or off with this icon right next to the little scroll icon so uh, depending on how you want your I, I like looking at the preview because for me you know so many different machines and stuff I, I don't know I, I don't know what these are so uh, like like this one here like here's another Here's a here's a nice double holder, let's say, that we can add to the machine, or a single uh, cross holder right here. And if I pick this one, the nomenclature, when I created this, it shows that this is a C3 holder. So I can come over here and say OK, and then right click on this guy and say add a new adaptive item to that. And under WTO, we have some inserts here, so I can say well maybe I want a C3 collet and I could look at the different collets that uh, we have for WTO WTO already so I'll just pick this one in the middle and that gets added to the assembly there so you can see that it's sitting where it should if, if I wanted to take a look at something you can always adjust the values I'll put a minus four in there just to get that way off of there so we can see we've got our our capto pocket and we'll snap that back to zero. I'll say OK, and then now we can add a tool. So here I'm going to pick just a regular old end mill. Uh, if I recall, that was a point uh, four, a four hundred thousandths. So we'll do a six millimeter. And uh, let's go to here and tool diameter 236 you can also do an expression I could do equal to 6 divided by 25.4 and hit the tab key and it'll do the calculation for me that will go out six digits so cutting length you know maybe a half an inch on this I don't know let's say it's a four fluter tool length we don't want it sticking out as much as it is 
So looking at this tool, uh, we're going to come here and just make those the same so it's sitting there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and say OK. So I have this 6 millimeter tool, which would work well. So let's go ahead and do some milling. So uh, going back to, let's go back to the part view here. Um, let's say I'm probably going to want to mill this top face first. So I'm going to highlight that, that top face. And then under the Features tab, we can go ahead and select Pocket. And when we do that, we get a new feature. This feature immediately, well, if you're already an Esprit user, you know what this is, or you should know what this is. Uh, this is what's called, uh, these are called open edges. So you see solid lines and you see dashed lines. The solid line, because the, the model, we, we have a wall here. You know, we can't mill through this wall. So Esprit knows when it makes the pocket that it should make this a solid wall. The tool cannot pass through that. But the tool can go past the, uh, you know, the dashed lines. And that enables us to do an open pocket and machine this away. So what I'm going to do now is just like the process we've always followed, I'm going to you know, create my feature, then I'm going to highlight my feature to tell Esprit which one I'm oper uh, applying my operation to, and then I go to milling, and then I'm going to select pocketing. So we're going to apply using uh, maybe that 10 millimeter that was next door to that 6 millimeter. I'm going to do um, OD flat, we'll do 10 millimeter. So the tool ID, I'm going to grab this 10 millimeter, and we can see that looks like it should work well. And um, you know, how do we want to do things? Uh, use previous stock here. You know, we can we can do that if we want. We'll leave that alone for now. Uh, for this. You know, you can choose whatever you want to do here. I mean, profit milling is great, but it's not necessary right here. You don't, I mean, maybe if this is a super hard material or something, you'd want to use it. I'm just going to do, let's say, one way. And uh, angle of the passes is going to be zero. Uh, we're going to leave that alone. Extra moves is unnecessary here. We're going to do the total depth here. I'm going to say system reef uh, default. So if you missed it in the last, in, in I think a couple of videos ago, if you, when you use a spree, it remembers what you did. And uh, you can system default everything at the beginning. But what I like to do is I just like to just change the things that are necessary for this one particular operation. So here on the total depth, because it was, I don't remember what the previous value was, but it was like a, an inch and a half, which is obviously way too big. So you can right click in here and say go to the system default and for depth it's going to read the depth of this feature. So incremental depth here we don't need anything. I'm going to do full uh, a full pass. Um, you know, I, I could do a finish pass. I'm not even going to bother with the stock. Again it's a tutorial. So we're going to come in here. This is way too high. <laughs> uh, we'll go down to 300 let's say and we'll do uh, uh, well, we'll leave the Z maybe a little bit higher just so it increases the feed. Step over of the diameter, we'll say it's going to be, let's say, 50%. Uh, stock allowance, walls, and floors. Again, uh, we can do another operation. Just want to put something out on the part so you guys see how it works. Um, so we'll give it a slight edge clearance here. And then uh, for the links, you know, you can set this to whatever you want as well. So, you know, you can go through here and manipulate the values a little bit. I'm not really, uh, you know, these were all picked by Esprit for me. So you can see when I type something in, it turns white. So, for example, you know, I'm typing this in as white. But when I tell it to go to a default value, you see it. It's a, it's a colorized value here, light blue. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say 
uh, OK, and Esprit is going to output that operation for me. So you can see uh, the difference in the stock and the part at this point now that we have output this operation. So um, now what we can do is put an operation on the inside of this guy uh, down underneath here in this pocket. So a couple ways to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this floor and I'm going to do a pocket operation or a pocket feature definition as well. And uh, uh, we're actually what I did is I actually clicked on the pocket operation which will make the feature for me automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. And uh, in this case, since I had done it in the tutorial, uh, that Esprit will do that for you. Uh, but I wanted to do step by step so that you guys can see what's going on. So I'm going to pick the floor there and I'm going to pick pocket so that we make the feature separately. And it's there now in the list. And then I can highlight it and apply my operation afterward. So same thing. Um, you don't have to do that step, obviously. Uh, we're going to come over here and do the OD flat. And this is going to be the 6 millimeter. And by putting the 10 and 6 millimeter in the nomenclature, that will help me in the code to look at the, uh, the name and know which operation that is very quickly. So uh, we're going to go to, you know, strategy. We don't, we don't want that to be the same strategy. So maybe on this one, I do want profit milling. So we can set some profit milling. Let's go ahead and go for it. So for the cut speed, I might want to increase this a little bit. Um, it, we don't have the RPM, so we're going to maybe put the RPM at the maximum. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So the total depth is set to the depth of the feature already. Uh, you know, for the pocket operation, there's not much to do here. Uh, we're going to do maybe... Uh, you can do a helical. You can do, you know, all the, all of this stuff is exactly the same as the Esprit version prior. So if you're familiar with Esprit already, uh, you don't really need to worry about any of that. Uh, you know all that. So I like using a two degree typically. Uh, step over, we're going to want this. We'll start at maybe 10% on this. And uh, I'm just going to go to zero again. Uh, we're going to leave that alone. I'm going to say OK. And we should get an operation that is applied to the bottom of the pocket. And you can see that we helical down. And then we're going to spiral out to the largest pocket shape. And then we're going to go ahead and clean using trichoidal strategy to uh, open up the rest of the shape and then hit the corners. So let's uh, take a look at the program. And we can see we've got green uh, for all of my linking. I'm going to go ahead and select the link that is before that first milling operation. And we see the tool come down. And we're coming in and doing those one-way passes. And you can turn the trace toolpath off if you want. So let me s slow that down a little bit so we can see that profit milling in action. And we can see, let me go ahead and uh, maybe start from the link before the profit milling. So we come down and we helical down into the material. And these were the default values that Esprit chose for me based on the size of the tool. And now we are spiraling outward to the final shape. So we can see the parts a little bit better. And we can turn the machine off and look at that. And we see it cleaning up the corners. And again, this was done to zero. But essentially, uh, you know, you can apply a contouring finish operation to the same feature if you'd like. So to apply the finishing operation, let's go ahead and I guess uh, edit the um, the uh, OD flat 6 millimeter. So I will put in a small amount of stock for, let's just say, the wall only. 
So for the uh, for the roughing, I'm gonna put for the roughing tab. I'm gonna put a stock allowance on the walls of let's say uh, fifteen thousandths. Give it something to bite on. And then what we can do is select this same feature now and actually apply a milling contour. And we're gonna use the same tool, you know. So here I'm gonna call uh, call this uh, OD flat six millimeter finish. And here I'm going to pick my six millimeter tool and we'll leave we'll leave all oh this is too high. Yep. And we'll maybe slow this down a little bit. <clears throat> so here you can uh, you know you've got your depth offset side computer uh, what do you want to do for the radius values? Uh, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna come in here and pick some system defaults on those and just let it kind of uh, do it itself. So I'm gonna say OK, and we can click on that and check that finish operation. So uh, for now that will take care of those two flat pockets and we can take a look at the rotary operation next.